But nonetheless, we are in chapter 38 of, of Jeremiah, and I want to read chapter 38, verse 1. And you're going to look at this and you're going to think, my gosh, I thought 36 on Genesis was going to be boring. How is this any better? I'm going to try, we're going to be doing a lot of names today. And, uh, okay, so just bear with me as I try to read them all. Septia, son of Mathan, or Matan, Gedaliah, son of Pashur, and Jehuchal, son of Shalima, Salimiah. Now, I may pronounce those different next time I say them. And Pashur, son of Mekaijah, heard what Jeremiah was telling all the people when he said, this is what the Lord says, whoever stays in the city will die by the sword. And he goes on and talks about this right here. And Jeremiah was prophesying to his nation, his city of Jerusalem there in Judah, that they needed to surrender to the Babylonians. He was described by them as not being very patriotic, kind of coming against the nation. Because he said, just surrender and go to the Babylonians and God will spare you. But if you stay here and try and fight the Babylonians, you're going to die. Well, these four guys that I just mentioned, uh, one of the guy's name was Sophia, another guy's name was Gedaliah, another guy's name was Jehuchal, and another guy's name was uh, Peshur, okay? They reported to the king what was going on. And then as you read through the rest of the chapter, these guys are responsible for taking Jeremiah and lowering him into a cistern right there in Jerusalem in the royal courtyard, <coughs> holding in a dry cistern that had some mud in the bottom of it until the, the captivity, they're punishing. He's going to be put in a prison in chapter 37, chapter, and these guys are mentioned in chapter 37, but in chapter 38 he's put into a cistern. So we know who reported him, and we know who, uh, who put him in the cistern. And I want you to notice, the names of the men are given, and the names of their father. Now probably their names are fairly similar to, to other names in the culture, but by giving their last name, or the name of their father, it kind of helps identify who these men are. Now, on our screen up here, Jacob, this is in Jerusalem. These are pictures that I took right here of Jerusalem. And this is on the east side. I'm going back over here, Jacob. <laughs> Here's our first little map. This is, this is, I hope you enjoy this at all. This is the, uh, for example, the Kidron Valley running this way, the Hinnom Valley running this way. Uh, Mount of Olives is over here. The Temple Mount will or, or eventually be put right in here. But right here is the, the ancient core or the city of David that was conquered by the Jebusites. This would be, this was a cliff side here. This was a cliff down here. There's also a central valley running right along here. So this was on a, like a hill. You got to climb up this steep embankment to get to the city on the, the east, the south, and the west. Right here was a place that you could enter the city, but this had, was, of course, a wall, and this is where the fortress was set up, and eventually, according to the Bible, David's palace was in the same area right here. Now, what archaeologists have not been able to find for years, for a variety of reasons, uh, was David's palace. Well, yeah, we know the location. It's not that hard. This is only like 15 acres right here. It's not a large, I mean, we can't find it. It's right here. It's like in this city block is where David's palace is. This picture that we have right here is taken from this angle right here. We're taking a picture right here. And what you're going to see right down here is the Gion Springs. This is where David or Joab entered through the jo uh, Gion Springs up into take the city of David. Hezekiah's tunnel runs underneath the city and comes out here in the Pool of Siloam right, right here. But nonetheless, the picture that you're looking at right here, go back over here, David. This, is the, this would be right here where David's palace should be. This is an ancient Jebusite wall right there. You can see it sloping right there. The square tower right there, the square wall, is a, a southern tower. There, up in here is some excavation right here. You see the little tent right here, little tarp? There's some scaffolding right there. What you're going to see here, actually I couldn't see it when I was there because they had it covered up and it was excavating. They even had a grid over it. You're going to be able to see there part of Nehemiah's wall. You can also see part of Nehemiah's wall right about up in there on the other side. And you're going to be able to see... Uh, uh, part of the north tower that matches that other uh, tower on the south there. Right underneath this part right here where this, this, this flat area is, that's a structure over the top of that kind of protecting the archaeological excavation of what was claimed when I was there to be possibly the, the Palace of David. It's just simply called the Large Stone Structure. This is a huge building from the time of David and the kings of Judah. Biblical archaeology this month, the, the lady that did the archaeological uh, work on it, um, Ellie, uh, Eliza, let me write her to say her name, Elat Mazar, M-A-Z-A-R, her grandfather was a great archaeologist also. 
has come out with an article in the Biblical Archaeology Review saying this is definitely the city of David. That next, next slide, please. This is a close-up of the Jebusite wall. You see the north, south tower there. Right out here is going to be, over in this area, is going to be the uh, dwelling place of the Israelites during the time of the kings. They live outside the wall of homes right there. Here you can see right here behind this would be Nehemiah's wall up there would be David's palace. Next slide, please. Now we're standing again right here, looking right at that Jebusite wall. You can see the residence right in here. This is the remains of the residence. That's the Jebusite wall or the base of a huge building. Over here is going to be behind the scaffolding is Nehemiah's wall that he helped reconstruct. You see some of it over there. And then behind that tarp is going to be the southern or the northern tower and David's palace. Next slide, please. This is a close-up of the dwellings. Next slide, please. Now, we're up on top. Now we're right up here where David's palace would be over this grid that I'm walking on. In fact, you see my shadow right there. See, that's me. Got myself in the picture. And I'm looking down into the grid because we couldn't we could access it because down there, they're excavating. They're digging. They're moving stuff away. They're finding things, going through different layers in what was supposed to be David's palace, finding the walls. And they had a grid. We're walking on top, so I took a picture of it. Uh, so that's me in David's palace. My shadow. Okay, next picture, please. Now, this is where I was at the edge and stuck my camera down and took a picture. And that's now, so you see, this is the, the grid or the the, scat, or the the post, the structure holding up the grid. And this is just where the excavation was taking place. Next slide, please. Now, what we're looking at, you've got a picture of this on your paper, too. These are some things that they have found there. Now, this is amazing. Now, if you are not amazed by this, I apologize, okay? I, I'm really sorry. But this right here is huge in confirmation of the Bible. And I hope I can communicate this to you. What you're looking at right here, we, I can't read that in Hebrew. That's, that's called a bula, B-U-L-L-A, -L -L -A, or in plural, bule, B-U-L-L-A-E. And what they are, those are seals. That's a clay tab, a clay uh, coin-like, but it would be on a, they'd have like a, a ring or a necklace that they would then press their name and their seal into a piece of clay to seal a document or to say that they were there or some kind of thing. And this right here, this in the Hebrew, as you read this, of course, uh, this is the impression made by the signet ring or the seal. This says, Gedaliah, son of Peshur. It was found in that large stone structure of which we believe to be David's palace. It is the signet. Now, if you look right here, in chapter 38 of Genesis, the uh, second name there is Gedaliah, son of Peshur. My friends, are, are you listening to me? In the Bible it says Gedaliah, son of Peshur. They have dug out of the ground in what is believed to be David's palace a clay inscription, a clay uh, pressing from a signet ring or some kind of a seal that says the exact same thing that Jeremiah 38, 1 says. That is amazing. Okay. A few feet away, when they're excavating that north tower, they found the next slide, please. I've got these turned around. That one that this one here is Gedaliah's. Okay? This is Gedaliah's. The one we saw before was Jehuchal, son of Shalemi. Now if you look at chapter 38, verse 1, the third name is Jehuchal, son of Shalemiah. Shalemiah. In other words, these are two clay impressions, one from Gedaliah, one from Jehuchal. Both men were mentioned in chapter 38 of Jeremiah. Both men reported Jeremiah. Both men helped lower Jeremiah into a cistern, according to Jeremiah 38. Now, an excavation that took place in the last... Well, I think they discovered these two, these two Beulah, or Beulah in, uh, in, in April of this year. So we're going to say last 12 months. In the last year, these two impressions have been found just feet away from each other. These two guys' names are mentioned in the same verse, in the same story, in the Bible, and now they are found in the same structure, in the same layer, as they're doing the same excavation during the same year. We're talking 2,500 years that these things have been laying in the ground, come back and confirm that these names are not just similar names, but they are the names of the, the same name, uh, with the same family name, Sana or Ben, whatever, and they're found in the same location in David's palace. 
And the activity of chapter 38, guess what chapter 38 was taking place? Chapter 38, the details were taking place in the royal palace. 